Hello everybody, we are very happy to share with you the story of an improbable behavior. Autotomy is the voluntarily break off of so many parts, such as a tail or a leg, to avoid predation. Indeed, this is one of the most extreme and widespread forms of defense founded in nature. Among arthropods in particular, a bizarre case of autotomy has been recently described. Males and females of this little scorpion of genus Anantheris are able to break off their tail as a form of defense. This is a unique behavior among scorpions and has been first reported in Colombia, which is my beloved country. But before I tell you more about it, I would like to show you a short video. This is me acting as a predator by pulling the tail of a male of Anantheris. As you can see, the male voluntarily detaches his tail, which twitches automatically for as much as 50 seconds after autonomy. So, adult scorpions that quickly detach their tails are more likely to survive a predator attack. However, autonomy probably has several consequences for the fitness of tailless scorpions. And I am saying that because when we say tail, we are not talking about the same tail of lizards, salamanders and mammals. What we call tail in scorpions is in fact the posterior part of their abdomen. This body part is known as metasoma and it contains the posterior end of the digestive, circulatory and nervous system. Moreover, at the end of the tail there is a single organ which injects venom in the prey and also the anus. So, independently of the breakpoint, individuals are losing important body parts. Few days after tail autotomy, a scar completely blocks the digestive system, and because there is no tail regeneration, the individual can never defecate again and suffer from severe constipation for the rest of their lives. To understand the implication of tail autotomy on the locomotion, foraging, and reproduction, we have studied the scorpion Anantheris balsani, which inhabits a tropical savanna from Sao Paulo state in Brazil. Let's start with the locomotor cost. If you want to have access to the paper with all details of this study, please use this QR code. Well, we know that body mass influences the locomotor performance of the scorpions. In general, lighter individuals are faster than heavier individuals. For instance, females carrying babies on their back are slower than females without babies on their back. Immediately after tail loss in Anantheris, males and females lose nearly 20% of their body mass. So, we ask it, do they become faster in the short time? And what about the constipation? We know that males and females keep feeding, and since they have lost their anus, they gain body mass over time due to prolonged constipation. Thus, we also ask it, do they become slower in the long time? To answer our questions, we filmed both tailed and tailless scorpions during a running trail. Using the footage, we estimate the maximum running speed of all individuals. The answer to our first question is certainly no. As we can see in this graphic, the maximum running speed is similar between tailed and tailless individuals, and the results are the same for males and for females. Previous studies on tail autonomy in lizards have also shown that tail loss does not necessarily hamper locomotor performance. It seems that autonomy promotes change in the locomotor performance only when the tail represents a great part of the moribus. And this is not the case of Anantheris. The answer to our second question is certainly yes. As we can see in this graphic, after 50 days, there was a marked decrease in the maximum running speed of autotomized individuals. Curiously, this pattern was found only for males and not for females. An important implication of this finding 
uh, is that tailless veils are probably more exposed to predation because they get slower and slower over time. So tailless males probably change their behavior to avoid predation. This change may include foraging in more protected places. Now let's talk about the possible foraging costs imposed by tail loss. To know more about this part of the story, you can access the paper using this QR code. As you all know, scorpions have venom and use it to subdue large prey. However, when the prey is small, scorpions only use their claws. Based on this information, we expected that predation success will decrease after tail loss, especially when the prey is large. Moreover, considering that males are smaller than females, we expected that the negative effects of tail loss will be higher for males than for females. To test our hypothesis, we first recorded the prediction Sussex at the time of prey manipulation of tailed individuals. Then we induced tail autonomy in half of these individuals and kept the other half intact. Finally, after one week, we recorded again the prediction Sussex at the time of prey manipulation of all individuals. We found that females' prediction success decreased, but not so much after tail autonomy. Moreover, Tailless females needed more time to subdue large prey. For males, predation success decreased dramatically from 90% when they were tailed to 17% when they were tailless. Moreover, the time necessary to subdue large prey was much higher for tailless males. In this video, we see a tailless male trying to subdue a large cricket. Not that the male tries to use the stinger to inject venom, but there is no tail and no stinger. At the end, the cricket escapes and the male remains without a meal. But there is an interesting side effect of the result. The more the males eat, the more constipated they get. And we now know that in the long term, Constipation is bad for the locomotor performance of males. Thus, the decreased ability to capture prey may attenuate the negative effects of constipation for them. Finally, it's time to talk about sex. One more, you can read the full paper using this QR code. And we are going to start with the cost paid by the males. At the first stage of the courtship behavior, males use the tail to perform a behavior called tail walking. This behavior probably serves as a way to stimulate the female. And at the last stage of the courtship, males also use their tail to support the body during female insemination, which occurs through a small package of sperm. Because tail is important during courtship, we predicted that tailless males will have lower reproductive success than tailed males. To test this hypothesis, we recorded several courtship from tailless and tailed males. Surprisingly, we found that tail loss does not have a negative effect on male reproductive success. The success of the sperm transfer was similar between tailed and tailless males. So, how do tailless males cope with the tail loss? Well, we observed that they also perform the tail wagging with the base of the tail. Moreover, they are able to use the base of their tail to support the body during female insemination. So, even mutilated, they are efficient lovers. Now, let's see the implication from the female's perspective. Like mammals, female scorpions carry their young within their bodies. Carrying embryos and feces requires a space inside the abdomen. Since two objects cannot occupy the same space simultaneously, offspring of tailless females will have less space available for development. Thus, their reproductive success should be lower than tailless females. After insemination, we followed the females for five months until they gave birth. According to our prediction, we found that tailless females produce 29% more offspring than tailless females. Thus, contrary to males, females clearly pay a reproductive cost. Accumulation of feces during five months of pregnancy may leave little space for offspring development and may also impair offspring development due to accumulation of toxins. This finding may explain 
why females are less likely than males to automize their tail. In conclusion, although the permanent loss of the tail reduces the speed and foraging success of scorpions, and even for females reduces the number of offspring, we now know that males and females live long enough to reproduce. Taken together, our results provide an explanation for the evolution of one of these bizarre forms of defense. As a final remark, we would like to say that the Biodiversity of Neotropical Arthropods is medicine and we have much to learn about them. However, if we want to continue to appreciate and study them, we need to preserve the places where they live. Now, we would like to thank a lot of people and institutions that helped and supported us and also all of you for the attention. Thanks.